Right, uh, hello again, and uh, we're moving on now to unit 663, uh, which is power loss in cables. And um, you remember from Ohm's law, the Ohm's law triangle, and then we had the power triangle as well. And from here, we know that V equals IR from there, and we know that P equals I times V from the power side. So if we uh, substitute uh, V on this side for what's on this side, so I could say that power equals I times, well, if I have it as IR, because I know that V equals IR times I times R. And from that, we get I squared R as power. Well, this formula is actually a very, very important formula in electrical engineering because it explains all our power losses in lots of situations, either in cables, overhead lines. It can explain losses in copper windings. If we know the current that's going through a winding and we know it's ohmic resistance, we can work out how much power is going to be lost in that winding. So it's an extremely important and very useful formula, I squared R. And we often talk about things like I squared R losses in situations, in circuits. So if you hear someone talk about the I squared R losses, you now know what they're talking about. So power equals I squared R and the unit is the watt. As you should remember from uh, your 662 course. Right, so um, where's that useful in cable situations? Well, if we have um, a load here, and that's supplied by a piece of cable, live and a neutral. Now this could be our substation here. And say this current draws say 100 amps so there's 100 amps going down the new the live and 100 amps coming back to the neutral backwards and forwards 50 times a second 50 hertz but for the purpose, purposes of this um, demonstration let's just assume it's uh, going in the same direction right so we have effectively a resistor here which represents the resistance of the neutral cable I'll call that RN there's our load and we have this is the resistance of our neutral sorry that should be live RL and RN and effectively there we've got three resistors in series but if I know there's 100 amps going through there and 100 amps going through this one, I equals 100, I equals 100, and we know that in a series circuit, the current remains the same all the way through. And if I know the resistance of this conductor by measurement or by calculation, Say, for example, uh, the resistance of this piece of cable was 0.02 of an ohm, and this was 0.02 of an ohm. I can work out the power loss in that cable from I squared R. So I squared RL, I squared R neutral, We've got 100 squared. Is 10,000 times 0 0.02 equals 200 watts. And in the neutral, that's going to be the same because it's the same resistance. That's going to be 200 watts as well. So the total equals 400 
watts. So if I'm supplying a load of 100 amps, with this cable, each of the conductors is 0.02 of an ohm. I will dissipate or give off 400 watts of heat in the cable. And that's why current really is the enemy of the electrical engineer because by keeping our current levels down we can do two things. We can reduce the losses in the cable which costs your company money and secondly um, I can reduce the cross-sectional area of any cables that I'm going to use and I can reduce the size of twitch gear and reduce the size of transformers in my system. So by keeping I down we can uh, save a lot of money which is why you try and get your customers to reduce their uh, current levels by giving them LED light bulbs and um, that reduces current levels. Okay, so um, that's that. Now, where does that come in to some use practically? Well, if I have two pieces of cable there and I'm going to create a joint between the two, live neutral, live neutral. Whatever joint system I use at this point here, and it's usually mechanical connection these days, nuts and bolts. Years ago they used to solder them and then use lead to seal it all up but now that doesn't happen, they use mechanical joints. If this is 0.2 of an ohm say and that's 0.02 of an ohm and I create a joint here and this joint is say 2 ohms because it's a poor connection or if it was a very bad connection it could be 5 ohms then the I squared R losses in that joint would be quite high if that was 5 ohms and I had my 100 amps going through it that particular link there in 5 ohms is 100 squared times 5 equals 50,000 watts, 50 kilowatts, which is quite a lot of heat, isn't it? Quite a lot of heat. If that was a poor joint at 5 ohms. If it was 2 ohms, it would be times 100 squared, be 10,000 watts, 10 kilowatts at 2 ohms. So you can see the resistance of these joints has to be very very low less than 0 0.001 of an ohm and if the joint becomes high resistance over the years then you can see the power levels dissipated at this joint are going to go very high and we don't want that once they go too high it can cause the joint to catch fire and um, we have a problem we have a power cut okay thanks very much bye